Hi folks, in this build video, I'm going to show you how to get over 31,000 HP of a tank build. It's the ultimate defensive build in New World, I think, and it's super effective and can be adjusted for different playstyles and different environments as well. I'm going to take you through all of that today. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. Check me out on Twitch. Twitch link is in the description below. And if you haven't seen my ultimate tank guide videos that are in my YouTube section, I'll, car I'll link the card in the channel above you right now that you can click on. Uh, it's well worth watching though, so you get an idea of general tank play. This is a more advanced tank video. Let's have a look at the Ice Gauntlet tank build. Okay, this build is absolutely insane. Just so you know, I run 500 Constitution when I run this build. I'll tell you why I run 500 Constitution and the gameplay and what I'm trying to look to get out of it. But ultimately, the tagline on this video is 31,000 HP. So let me show you how you get that. You can't go over 500 in any stat point. So I have to take this extra one somewhere else. So I'm going to take it in Intelligence. Right, I'm going to run 460. And then once I've run that 460, what I'm then going to do is you can see my health at the moment is 20,000 there in the bottom. The 20,000 in the bottom does include my health amulet, which is additional health, of course. But once I pop my food, I've got the 40 con food here. You see I'm on now 21,000 HP. So then you might be going, okay, well, Def, well, how do you get to the 31,000 magic number you've mentioned? Uh, I'm going to make the build for you really quickly. It's basically, most things on the left-hand side, which is the main parts of the tree, this is the builder tree. It's basically... The builder we're going to use, but we're not going to use any of the building components. We're not going to run Ice Pylon at all, but we are going to run most of the defensive things here. There's a lot of Fortify on this side of the tree, which is really important. And then the only thing we want access to here is Ice Storm. That's all we really need and the root ability. Okay, so when you run this, the reason why I say it's 31,000 HP is because Ice Tomb, this ability here, scales with your HP. Basically, Ice Tomb gives you, gets 50% of your HP. So if you have 10,000 HP, Ice Tomb only has 5,000 HP. If you have 21,000 HP, then Ice Tomb has 10,500 HP, which is really effective. So the way you tank with this is you get hit, you get really, really low with your sword and shield, okay? You get your full stamina depletion. Then they need to get you to like 1,000 points. Then when that happens, you tomb. Tomb, you've now got, I think it's 8 or 10 seconds in this, a full purify. They need to get 10,000 this HP down before you're out of it. And then once that's done, you, you're, hopefully your healers put a sacred ground on you, your stamina's regen, and you're back for the fight. It is the ultimate defensive capability. Um, I'll show you, I'll put an image on the screen right now of my last war performance with this. It was over 250 assists and two deaths as the main shot caller in the army. On point all the time. So I'm literally in the middle of the action. Uh, the next best tank got nine deaths and I got two, which shows you the capabilities of this build. Look, you're not going to get much utility out of this as from an offensive perspective. There is definitely ways you can do that. I'm going to tell you how you should be playing this build. But if you just really need your tanks to survive, I'd highly recommend running this. And what was the inspiration for this was the fact that Ice Shower is the most oppressive CC ability in the game right now. Okay, this ability alone is absolutely insane and worth running for. If you can get a group of five people stacked in here, it's a big clump in a war situation. I'm going to try and show some clips for you on the screen of those big clump moments when I managed to use this and they get wiped. It's super, super effective. And the other thing is Ice Storm again, which is a pretty effective perk, right? I mean, when you do this, it creates a frosted area that you can use in. You can get cooldown reduction. You see that cooldown reduction in the bottom right-hand side on Ice Shower just from popping it in there. You know, there's synergies like that on Ice Shower that all give you big cooldown reduction and allow you to get more uptime on Ice Shower. And if you combine that with Gravels in your armor, you can still set up a lot of plays and more importantly, survive them. So I want to go into the build itself and I want to talk you through the reason why it's these perks. Okay, so obviously Ice Shower. Ice Shower is massively important because one, it creates a frosted area. Two, it creates Frostbite. So Frostbite provides a root. It provides a movement speed debuff of 50% and that remains on the target for three seconds after they exit the Ice Shower. They also are unable to sprint and dodge when they're in this. I'm sure you've played this game long enough to have been trapped in one of these. It is absolutely horrific and you feel like it lasts forever. You combine that with Enduring Shower to make this last seven seconds rather than the initial four seconds. Allies get a movement buff, including yourself, when they move through it. And Frigid Shower is really important. You apply a 10% rend to your targets. So it's really effective. You can get that in a nice stack. That's a big portion of rend you've provided. Storm. The thing with Ice Storm is you need to understand how to use it. If you're playing around the point, Okay, and I want you to imagine that this patch of grass is the point right now in war that you're focusing on. Your mages who are running 300 plus in, 400 plus in, they're going to be doing the ones who drop the ice storm down on this area. 
Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to put your ice storm on top of their ice storm. Why? Because you basically end up overriding it. And with your six intelligence, you are going to tickle their balls, whereas your mages will be losing out on such big damage. So how do you play around that? How do you ensure that you don't do that? Well, I never actually put my ice shower on the point unless there's no other ice shower there. OK, I'll end up mostly trying to block off their rotations. So if they're rotating between these two areas, I'll put my ice shower there just to slow them up. Slowing them up creates opportunities for your bruisers, creates opportunity for your mages, ends up creating clumps that other people can take advantage of. So I actually just use Ice Storm to try to CC particular areas where I want to slow down rotations rather than try to gain any damage out of it. And if we go back to the tree itself, yeah, we do take Ice Storm, which creates the frosted area and slows enemies for 25%. And we can buff that with an armor perk that I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, weakening Gust, we don't really need. Um, but the incoming damage is increased by 10% uh, to enemies in the Ice Storm while they're below 50% health. So that's like a, I know it doesn't say rend, but that is effectively a rend when they're below 50% health. So really effective. Uh, a bit of mana cost decrease and then increases Ice Storm damage. In reality, we could probably drop this perk for something else, but there's nothing else I would really, really like. So yeah, you could swap that point for something else if you need to. Then I want to talk about Entombed, which is the single best perk on this. I know people think shower is, but for a tank, it's going to be this one, which we've mentioned. So the tomb gets 50% of your health scaling. It lasts for 10 seconds, but it can be destroyed early. You press block to exit with the tomb, or you can press light attack, or you can dodge. If you press light attack, it costs 10 mana, and that's really important for something I'm going to tell you later on. This is fantastic. When you exit the tomb, you get 25% fortify, which is huge as a tank, because you're going to be massively stacked on heavy armor, 25% fortify is fantastic. And this is the Biss perk. Have you ever wanted to have Divine Health Purify and you're out on your amulet and couldn't afford it because it's like gold cap plus 2,000 asthma, it feels like? Um, this is Purify. And it's not just Purify, it's repeatable Purify. How good is that? You know, the ability to purify yourself. And that means you can take something else on your amulet, by the way. You don't need to run double Purify now, do you? You could actually run something like Slash Ward which would be really good, and instead run Purify on this build. This is such an important perk, okay? I think this is the single biggest thing. So again, I think how you play this is you turtle up, stamina gets depleted, health starts coming down, health gets really low, you've used your fortifying shield rush, you've used your defiant stance, all of that good stuff. Right, now it looks like danger, and I'll show you a clip on how you do this. Then you tomb up. Once you tomb up, you wait for as long as possible, as long as you possibly can. Your stamina's coming back up, your health is coming back up, hopefully, because the healer's looking after you. You get it out, you go straight back to your shield, if possible, and you turtle up again. And you try and live like that for as long as you possibly can. That is a super effective combination right there. I just want to take you through some of the other perks I'm taking here. Uh, this is a really important one, heavy free. So if you do a heavy attack while the enemy is standing in your storm or has frostbite, and ice shower provides frostbite, you, you give them a root. OK, you root them in target, a bit like Petrifying Scream on the Void Gauntlet, and it lasts for one second. OK, really, really fantastic. So what you kind of want to do is if you get them in your storm or you get them in your shower, this applies the root, and then I try and heavy attack for another root. OK, storm, heavy attack. Try and root them in place. Try and hold them in place. You're trying to use this to create massive opportunities for your main army to attack those clumps and attack those targets. You're not there to get the kills. You're there to make assists on this play. Okay. Uh, this one, because you have to take something on this first row to get you access to the rest of the perks. So critical rejuvenation, gain 15 mana whenever you critically hit a target, which is good because we don't have most of the mana regen perks are on this side of the tree, which we're not taking. So you don't want to really run mana pots in war because as a tank, you'd probably want health potion, regen potion, cleansing potion, and gemstone dust or oak flesh barn, whatever you prefer to run. And that's all four of your slots taken. So you can't really afford to run mana pots in war. So actually having this is very quite helpful to tell you the truth. And then let's have a look at the rest of the builder tree. Blocking stamina. This is a bit of a dead perk, but actually someone pointed out to me and I thought it was quite useful. Sometimes in this game, you do still get the weapon swap bug and you end up finding you are standing there when you think you should be blocking with your sword and shield and you're actually blocking with your ice gauntlet. Well, this can kind of turn it into some utility. So when you block an attack with the ice gauntlet, it converts mana to stamina, it converts three mana to 15 stamina. So normally what you're trying to do is you're trying to block because you want to be able to block with your sword and shield. Well, this just gets your stamina back a bit quicker to enable you to block with your sword and shield again effectively. So 
it's a bit of a every cloud has a silver lining perk to me. And then we take quick, quick frost for the movement speed um, buff when you're in a frosted area, which is your ice storm, your shower, or your allies' ice storms and showers. And that's really effective because sometimes when you're out of stamina, you're out of healing tomb, anything like you just need to kite the enemies a bit. So just having that movement speed is that really nice and effective play. Empowered Frost, when you stand in a frosted area, you gain free mana each spell cast. Well, this is kind of you helping to keep your mana topped up a little bit. Frozen Touch, enemies who attack you when you have 100% health get slowed by, for 25% by two seconds. Uh, it's As a tank, your health does get up to 100% quite a lot. Is it a fantastic perk? No, but there's no other perks I'd really rather take on it. Uh, this is fantastic, Refreshing Frost. You reduce the cooldown of your ice gauntlet abilities by 20% when you cast in a frosted area. So if you can stand in an ice storm or you can stand in an ice shower, then great, you're going to be able to do that. So I'm just going to illustrate that to you. That's got a 19 second cooldown. I'll do that here. Now I'm going to pop the tomb and watch because I'm standing in the area. Did you see the bump I got in the bottom right there? The bump I got from those two for standing in means you can manage your cooldowns better because these have quite slow cooldowns, right? This is a, a 20 second cooldown, 30 second cooldown, 30 second cooldown. Really, really slow cooldowns. And then Defiant Freeze is another one. When you cast an Ice Gauntlet ability, you get 4 to 5 for 20% for 2 seconds. Now, that's really good because obviously when you do this, you get, kind of get stuck in this kind of... You can't switch weapons straight away always. You kind of get stuck a little bit or you might get smashed about. And the Fortify will just let you survive that little bit longer. But and this Fortify is really good because actually when you swap weapons, you still have... You see in the bottom of the screen, you still actually have the Fortify bonus. So it's really nice to kind of just take you... You know, helping you tick over. So the fortify lasting in those areas is fantastic. Okay, so that's the full build on War itself. Um, I'll show you the clips that I want to talk about, which is the big one where I survive 30 seconds against a 10 stack of people all ham raining down blows on me, which is brilliant. And then I want to also talk about the armor itself, because the armor itself, there are some really there's some perks that you really need to think about, and also some different ways of thinking about it as well. Because with 500 con, you have to have con on every single armor piece and weapons. You can't run con on anything else. Um, but I managed to pick this up on the market for 6k and I think it's outrageously good for wars. Because it has plague crits, which is if you, you can't get plague strikes on ice gauntlet. Ideally you would have been able to get plague strikes because when you do the heavy attack for root, you know, you could combine that with plague strikes to apply some disease. Okay, we can't do that because you can't actually get plague strikes on an ice gauntlet, which is a bit of a shame. That being said, plague crits is good. I can light attack when I see an enemy below 50% health to try and proc some disease. And then I've got an unending thought on this. So normally people go, I don't want a weapon perk on my weapon. I want all of my weapon perks on my armor so I can put damage on my weapons. But we're not running damage. We're running six intelligence. What's the point in buffing our tiny, minuscule damage? It's completely wasted. Actually, I'd rather have unending four, which is a fantastic perk, to allow me to run more defensive slots on my armor. So you can see here, both of these two pieces have resilient and elemental aversion. Um, and they stack. And that's fantastic, because if I had the weapon perk over here, here, if I had unending four here, I'd have to lose one of these two things. I don't want to lose one of these two things because elemental version is fantastic. It works on more things than just standard elemental attacks like they say it does. And of course, resilient is bis for a tank. You absolutely have to have it. So this to me is kind of the best in slot I could possibly get other than being a legendary and taking something else with it, like refreshing move. If that was even possible, that would be bis. But this is really good for me. Now let's talk about Unending Thor and the armor perks that you sorry, the weapon perks that you should be looking for. Unending Thor is really good. When you pop your storm, the frost effects remain on the enemies for another two seconds after they exit the ice storm. So what that does is enemies come in here, right? Normally as they leave, nothing would happen, but with the frost on it, it's going to last for two more seconds. And of course, that's the slow that lasts for another two seconds, which again helps to create clumps and helps to create opportunities. So to me, you absolutely have to have that perk. Uh, the second thing you must, must, must have is Healing Tomb, okay? Healing Tomb gives you a 10% health bump after you exit in Tomb with full mana. And that's really important because if you remember what I said earlier, I said there's different ways to get out of Tomb, didn't I? I said there's the dodge, there's the left click, and the left click, if you read the tooltip, press to exit the tomb, press block to exit the tomb normally, or press left click to exit while causing a damaging knockback at the cost of 10 mana. Now we don't do any damage because we're running so low everything else. So actually, if you do that cost of 10 mana, if you look at what this says, you have to have full mana when you exit in tomb to get healing tomb. And what I know is the fact that if you left click here and spend that 10 mana, you don't get the heal. 
because as you exit, you do not have 100 mana. You're back down to 90. So when you use this, I would never left click. I would block to get out or just let it expire because when it expires, as long as it expires, when I mean expire, the enemy is depleted the health bar and you have full mana, you'll get the health bump. And that health bump is 10% health bump. Well, when we're running 20,000 HP, that's 2,000. 2,000 HP as a health bump here is really nice. Because we're going to be running this with Defiant Stance as well. So we'll get the Defiant, we'll get the Defiant Stance health bump. And really effective. And when they've fixed Divine next patch, this will be even better. Because I should get even more healing from Healing Tomb. Super cool. Okay, on my Sword and Shield build, you've probably seen this on my Ultimate Tank Guide video. So I'm not going to run into it too much. It runs Defiant Stance. Defiant Stance mostly for this, which gives me a 15% health bump. You know, which is really nice when I get that. Again, with Divine, you can bump that up as well. Um, recuperation to increase that healing by 10% again, super effective. And then a lot of Fortify on Shield Rush. Not that it's in this tree, but you should be running Fortify on Shield Rush. And then Reverse Stab for the cooldown reduction mostly. Um, but if we just take you through the rest of the armor pieces there, I do have Contagious Reverse Stab, which I think is a top tier perk. Contagious Reverse Stab passes on a debuff, but not only does it pass on a debuff, it restarts the timer. So if you have disease of one second on you and you manage to Reverse Stab someone, you'll restart the clock on disease when you pass it to them, which I think could be like a nine second disease in many instances. So really nice perk uh, with Resilient Invigorated and it pass passes to multiple targets as well. So if you hit three targets, you disease three targets. Super effective and slept on. Fortify and Shield Rush. When you use Shield Rush, you get Fortify. Fortify, 19% that lasts for four seconds, I think it is, which is super nice. But not only on top of that, of course, Shield Rush also applies Weaken 10% to all enemies within five meters for 10 seconds, which means they do less damage and you also slow them. So you start to see what this tank guide video is all about. You start to become an absolute CC monster, applying so many slows, roots, rends, and weakens on your enemy at, while giving yourself a ton of fortify for survivability. Super effective. So on my amulet at the moment, I'm not running divine. Why am I not running divine? Because you may have seen in the PTR patch notes, divine is currently bugged. It basically stops working when you die and you either have to relog or take it on and off. And sometimes you'll forget to do that in heat of war and then you just kind of lose the benefit of it. So I've actually dropped my divine health amulet that I have here, uh, which is divine health void protection for this one, which is fortified to give me that fortify last a little bit longer with frozen protection because everyone's running ice corn at the moment. So happy with that. And then I run hearty keen awareness. And the reason I run, I run keen awareness is mostly because of the plague crit. So I just want to proc that a little bit more. And then I'm still trying to buy a refreshing toast, nimble earring. Um, they're very hard to find with con and a good third perk like refreshing or something like that. And I run Defiant Stance and Sturdy on my shield. Refreshing Evasion is okay, not the best, but it's pretty good for me. What would I like on my armor set if I could have more? Well, instead of Invigorated, I definitely wouldn't have Invigorated by preference because when, when you have the Purify ability on the Tomb, uh, you, you're going to be able to get rid of weak and disease, exhaust and rend in most instances doing that way. So what would I rather? I'd rather have refreshing. To me, refreshing is a best in slot perk here for this build because all of your cooldowns are very long. I've already done the um, Ice Gauntlet cooldowns, haven't I? But if we look at the Sword and Shield ones, this has a 20 second cooldown on Reverse Stab, 20 seconds on Rush, 43 seconds on Defiant Stance. So if you don't have refreshing move on your weapon, you are be in for a bad time because your cooldowns are so slow. So actually, if you had full refreshing on this gear, it would be massively effective to, for just, you know, the longer your timer is, actually, the more value you get out of refreshing. So X users don't really need refreshing because their cooldowns are so, are so quick because they have lots of inbuilt cooldown reduction on the spear build, for instance, or the rapier build. Whereas on these builds, there isn't that much. There's just reverse stab or there's just um, the refreshing frost perk we've shown you in the ice build video as well so yeah because of that actually having refreshing would be really effective here, and that's what you could look out for if you're designing your ultimate build for the ice gauntlet okay then if you want to turn this into a bit of an opr kind of fun build um you could go 250 250 rather than 500 or you want to be able to put out put some damage in war go 300 con i mean 300 con works really nicely on this because um if we look at the attribute here when you get to 300 con you get plus 20 percent duration on your stuns your slows and your root spells you're doing a ton of slows and roots. That's really, really nice. And if you went 300, 200, I, I don't know if you need 200 because you get this 10 mana on after a dodge. It's not too important in my view. But at least getting to 150 is plus 15% to elemental damage with the crit chance and the 10% on light and heavy attacks. 
So when you get to 150, 200, you can put out some half decent damage, especially in OPRs. And in OPRs, you can be that tank that leads the army ice showers and then let your army catch up while you free cast from the back and just slow them up again. It can really work with a bit more damage. Now, when I play OPR, I don't run 300, I don't run 500, sorry. I run probably 250, 250 for a bit of fun. And my build also looks a bit more like this. So because you're going to be hitting targets, I'd rather take this cold reach for this buff of 15% damage while they're further away. Increase critical damage when my ice gauntlet abilities are full, and that can work if you're sat on the top of a fort pumping damage. Full storm, full shower, full tomb. I take all of those things exactly the same. But now, because I'm trying to get this ultimate chill, which is wasted when we're running the 500 con tank because we're not doing any damage, but here it's really effective. Ice gauntlet abilities chill targets and increase ice damage dealt to that target by 25% for three seconds. A very nice DPS boost. Now, to get that, you have to take all of these perks, non-ability perks in the Ice Tempest build, and then you get access to Ultimate Chill. And that's what my OPR build would look like. And that's just quite nice to fun, because as a tank, it's always nice to output a bit of damage sometimes. And when you put a nice storm down and shower down and you see the damage you can pump out, really good. And if you run an OPR build on this, I would kind of recommend, actually, just to pump up your damage a bit more, get something with Deadly Frost on it. Deadly Frost basically means your Ice Shower now provides damage, 8% weapon damage to affected enemies within your ice shower. And you're going to be using ice shower a lot. So that's quite a nice perk as well. Um, the sword I have on this at the moment, I'm just running keen and I'm just running curiosity greed for the keen and keenly fortified for survivability. You know, I would really like a constitution sword with keenly fortified and refreshing move would probably be much better for me, but they're quite hard to find on the market at the moment and crafting hasn't gone particularly well. In war, I would also actually think you should run a sword with plagued strikes. Plague Strikes is a guaranteed disease on a heavy attack. Why is heavy attack so good in Sword and Shield? Well, because on my Sword and Shield build, I would normally run Freeing Justice. This is an OPR build I'm running at the moment. So I normally I would probably lose one with the shield and I'd stick it on Freeing Justice. When you run, when you do a heavy attack, you lose one debuff. Okay, so I lose a debuff when I do this. I kind of purify myself. And not only that, I would also apply some disease on heavy targets and you can afford to do heavy attacks in war why can you afford because you're running 300 con or 500 con so you can actually afford to tank that damage when you do that and it's a really effective play there that probably the play style you should be thinking about okay and just to show you that clip i mentioned earlier this was live on stream so if you haven't seen me on stream and you fancy coming in and dropping in the twitch link is in the description below but here we were pushing monarch's bluff some yellows and purples were teaming up together. And being a streamer, you do get a bit of uh, extra attention, shall we, shall we say, from uh, some, of the, some of the companies on the server. Hi, guys, if you're watching. Um, they chased me up to the top of the mountain. I did have a pocket healer with me. He wasn't in my group, by the way, but just must have had uh, off-group healing on, which was super effective for me, luckily. And you can see here I tank so much damage. And I really neatly apply everything I've been telling you about in this video. My health gets low. My stamina gets low. I pop healing too. I get out, try to survive. Been in a shower try to kite a little bit. I last here, I think it's for 28 seconds against about seven, eight, nine to 10 people at one point, all raining down blows on me. I don't think there's any other video, any other build, sorry, in this game that's capable of doing this. And you can use this opportunity in war. If you can draw massive clumps onto you like this and call it out to your main army and they can, they can wipe seven, eight people. I mean, you're going to create such a huge advantage in that environment right there for you to be able to capture a point or cut off a rotation or whatever it is, uh, is so effective and you need to be able to play around that. And fundamentally as a tank, it's an amazing feeling to be able to tank that amount of damage, right? You know, unfortunately, we don't always get credit for the damage we're taking, but when you see you're creating those opportunities, what you have to think about is tanks sometimes are, or not sometimes, they are massively undervalued in PvP still to this day. Um, if you don't understand the value that tanks bring, you don't understand the tactics involved and you're missing out on so many opportunities. That's not to say you should take an army of tanks, of course not, but a smattering. I'm talking about two or three as an absolute minimum to create opportunities, to put on point, to survive, to create these CC opportunities for you. Um, when I do this and I take eight or ten people away from main army fighting to fight me instead... What I'm doing is I'm creating advantages. I'm creating number overloads for the rest of the main army to be able to get kills. And once they've won their number overload, they can come and support me. And there's very few builds in the game that can actually do that. Heavy Bruiser on a 1v1 is just going to be fighting and then you're going to get clumped up and probably die and they move on. It's only the tank that has that survivability to create these overload opportunities. And as long as you create your tactics around that and understand that, you can get a lot of, a lot 
out of this build. Okay, and the final thing I want to mention is there is an alternative build you could run here. You know, I run defensive formation because I get so hard aggressive. I get so hard aggroed, sorry, as the shot caller. I was de facto leading my company for a period of time, which brought me some extra attention. And being on stream, those three combinations meant that I was being hard focused by people all the time. Even in OPR, I would get people chasing me down, leaving the main army, just hunting me. So I had to define myself with the ultimate defensive build. If you do not get that much aggro, you can actually offer some more uplift to your team. So not only just the CC ability that we've been speaking about, you could run a leadership build as well. So you could refund this. And what would a leadership build look like? Uh, this is what a leadership build would look like for me. So leadership's great because whilst you've got your sword and shield out, you increase the damage of your group members by 10%. I take leaping strike. It can be used really defensively to get out of bad situations, or it can actually apply some nice damage, especially if you've got empowering leaping strike. Um, reverse stab because I just love reverse stab for the cooldown reduction and then we end up taking some things that buff our damage so increasing the sword and shield crit strike some more damage to slowed enemies we know we're going to be slowing enemies a lot a bit of haste uh, and a bit of empower when we do heavy attacks which synergizes so nicely with plague strike so empowered stab free injustice and plague strikes really nice synergy on the right hand side you have to take sturdy shield you have to take defensive training I think for the fortify as well Mage is so strong in this game, you have to take elemental resistance. I could never say no to more than 10% additional healing. Uh, and then Defiant Stance as well. Look, you can talk about some of these. The one I would really like to take as well is Sturdy Grip. Would be the one I would like to take as well. But in reality, you have to sacrifice something. If it was me, I'd sacrifice potentially recuperation. If you've got Divine on your amulet and you remember to take it on and off all the time, because I think this takes you over the cap. So I'd probably run it or something like that as well. And when you run this... Um, you could go 500 con, but in reality, because you're running a bit, you, because you can play a bit more offensively, which is this is what it's allowing you to do. And really importantly, leadership only works while you're holding the sword. So if you have your ice corn out all the time, you're not going to get the benefit of this. So you're incentivized to run around with your sword and shield out. And if you're incentivized to run around with your sword and shield out, you might as, might, might as well be running some strength. So if I was doing this build, I would actually run something like 300, 200 or 250, 250. Now, 200 is nice because you get stamina damage, so you can take out other tanks on point. Um, you get the 10% damage to melee weapon heavy attacks, which we're going to be doing a lot of. And if you got to 250, 250, you get a 10% damage boost to stunned, slowed, or rooted enemies, which again, there's going to be a lot of. So if you're running it like that, you'd run your Ice Gauntlet, you'd throw out your abilities, you'd go straight back to Sword and Shield, you'd fight, 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 fight. You'd pop the healing tomb, and then you're straight back out to Sword and Shield, fight, 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 fight. And that would be a quite aggressive tank way of playing. You could offer some a lot of opportunities to your team. And you could play within some kind of bruiser group as a heavy bruiser, right? Because you could follow up on a grav wheel with a shower. And then you can actually apply some quite decent damage with your sword and shield whilst you buff your allies with the leadership build as well. Okay, and that brings us to the end of this Ice Gauntlet Sword and Shield build video. 31,000 HP. I hope you got a lot out of it. I've really enjoyed this build. Who knows how quickly uh, Amazon Game Studios will nerf the ice gauntlet i think it's going to come up i think the ice shower is quite an oppressive ability especially when we know that scream is getting nerfed but ice shower isn't doesn't really feel like the right answer but in the meantime i'm going to really enjoy this um i think it's the ultimate defensive build in the game at the moment so hope not too many of you run it because it's going to be hard to kill you bloody gits but other than that um if you've enjoyed the video like and subscribe follow me on twitch and i'll see you soon all right keep rocking everyone stay safe